Dr. P here to talk about the demise of the board game, perhaps. It sounds good, but really, uh, let's say the severe diminishment of the board game. I'm talking about there being fewer traditional style board games where the board records maneuver and geospatial relationships. Instead, we have a lot more card games and a lot more quote-unquote board games where the board is a status indicator or recorder and not a field for maneuver. Many of these games, both the card and the board, are essentially abstract even if they have a theme tacked onto them. Now think about it. What are boards for in games? Think of classic pre-commercial board games. The board is almost always used to record geospatial relationships. It's important that something is right next to another thing, or far away, or what direction it's in. And the core of the game is maneuver, or occasionally placement as in go, of the pieces in geospatial relationships. Now this matches war. War is about maneuver in geospatial relationships, and classic games are essentially war games. Even in Go, where you have placement rather than maneuver, the location of the pieces in relation to one another is very important. It's a strong tradition, so strong that you get games like the Game of Life, which has nothing to do with maneuver and geospatial relationships, but they still provided a board and movement. Or Monopoly, they provided a board and made movement mandatory, although there's no maneuver because you have no choice. And the current location, was in, current location was important in an industry where it isn't important. What it did provide is a form of the real estate mantra. Quote, the three most important things in real estate are location, location, and location, unquote. But there are lots of so-called board games nowadays where the board is a status recorder and indicator, and something else could fairly easily be used, whether it's pieces or cards or whatever, to record that, because there's no maneuver, there's no geospatial relationships. In other words, in some sense, they're like card games with lots more record keeping. And that record keeping can be done in a variety of ways. For example, player layouts are possible that sit in front of each player. So a board is often in these kinds of games as a convenience, but not in its traditional function. It seems that card games are becoming very popular. At our local university game club, we usually see many more card games being played than board games, even if you don't count Magic the Gathering, which is about one-third of the club. And of course, Card games rarely involve geospatial relationships and even less often maneuver, although you can do it. I've done it several times. Cards are easier to transport than boards. The boxes for card games can be smaller. Card games on average are simpler than board games. Card games also offer you the opportunity to put the rules on the cards so players don't need to read as much before they play the game. And nowadays, when so few people want to read rules, that's very important. It's also easier to design a short game if you're using cards than if you're using a board, or at least if the board is, involves maneuver. And short games are where it's at these days. What used to be a filler, one hour, is now a relatively big game. The fillers are 15 to 20 minutes. And five-minute games are popular, though inevitably shallow. Let's look at the numbers here. Uh, ICV2 studied the hobby game market. And this is for 2013. By category, collectible games, $450 million. Miniatures, $125 million. Board games, $75 million. Card games, $35 million. And that's a really odd category. I didn't recognize the names of the, t of the titles that were popular. And RPGs, $15 million. So games that are usually cards are at $485 million and board games at $75 million. And I think board games includes a lot of games that have cards as their main use, 
like Munchkin and Bang and Lost Cities, but they tend to be called board games. We don't differentiate between them and the board games with actual boards. Of course, it also, in that $75 million, includes a lot of board games where the boards are status indicators and not areas for maneuver. So what fraction of all this is occupied by the board games where there's actual maneuver or spatial relationships? Less than one-tenth compared to the card games. I don't see an expectation that this is going to change. This, it's a trend and you know that it's not going to reverse direction. I think it'll get worse from a traditional board game player's point of view. After all, it's the age of instant gratification, which card games serve better. It's the age of convenience, which card games serve better. And it's the age of short attention spans, which card games serve better. There's another aspect to this that I'm going to throw in here. I've discussed it in other screencasts. The traditional board game was a game of consequence. You had to take responsibility for what happened. You earned what you achieved. Modern games are moving toward a reward basis. You're rewarded for participation. The game guides you. If a player fails, he blames the game. This is especially true in video games, and if we look at video games, sometimes we can see the trends in board games, what's going to happen. So, in this respect, board games as games of consequence, board games are going away. So you see why I said the demise of the board game. Perhaps I should have said the, the demise of new board games, as the old ones are still going strong.